Hey, what's up guys? This is a video I've been wanting to do for a while to try to help some of the new shooters figure out what focus and parallax actually are. All right, now while focus and parallax are two completely different things, I'm going to walk you through the focus part of it, then I'm going to let my buddy Jeremiah from Right On Optics explain parallax in a way that even I could understand it. All right, now on a modern rifle scope, it's going to have a focus right here on the eyepiece. It's either going to be a European type focus or it's going to be one of the old school focuses and you turn it either way and lock it. Now what this focus does is work on the reticle only. It has nothing to do with what's going on downrange. That focus on the eyepiece is strictly for the reticle, crosshair, whatever you want to call it. But that's all it does. Now a lot of guys will do stuff like turn it at a white wall, that works great. Turn it into the sky, not into the sun, and play with it till it's nice and sharp. Now your eye will try to adjust. So if it's out of focus, your eye will be fighting it to get it in focus. What works best for me is to throw it up, look through it, and put it down for a second and turn it. Throw it up, look through it, put it down for a second and turn it. A lot like if you've ever been to the eye doctor, which is better, and they run the little slides down there. You want to find the focus that gets the reticle as sharp as you can possibly get it. And if you're out later and you notice that the focus is off just a little on the reticle, just tweak it as you go along. And if you have the lock ring type, lock her down right there. If it has the fast focus type, you're good to go. See, I told you, I told you that was gonna be easy. All right, now there is another kind of focus. That's the parallax or the side focus or the adjustable objective focus. Now what this focus does is bring the image down range into razor sharp focus. On higher magnification scopes, you need this focus so that you can get the image as clear as you can get it. Now, once you get the image as clear as you can possibly get it, it may or may not be parallax free. Now that's where my buddy Jeremiah is fixing to take over. He's gonna to explain to you real easily what parallax means. It's basically getting both images on the same plane. So if you move your head in any direction, there's no reticle shift on the target. They're in the same plane inside of the scope body itself. All right, Jeremiah, you take it. Everybody, Jeremiah over at Right On Optics to do a little tech tip for you. We're gonna talk about parallax today about what it is and why it's important to fix it. So the easiest way I think to explain parallax is take your finger with me, if you will, and put it out in front of you. Your finger in this case is gonna represent the reticle inside of your optic. Now if I focus on my finger or my reticle, everything beyond it is blurry. And the same thing happens if I focus on my target or something beyond my reticle or finger, my finger's blurry. That's because they're not on the same focal plane. And that's what your side parallax adjustment on your right on optic does. It takes your target and your reticle and it moves them onto the same focal plane so that they're both crisp and clear. Something to do though, before we even mount our optic up is not to forget about our fast focus eyepiece or our reticle focus. Now what you wanna do with a, a high power scope like this Conker X7 318 by 50 is put it on high, the highest magnification. So I have this on 18 power and I'm gonna look up either their nice blue sky, not the sun, the nice blue sky or a white background. I have a white wall behind here. So I'll throw this up and I'm gonna look through it and I'm gonna start to adjust this until it's just right for my eye. Now your eyes are pretty awesome and they're gonna strain and struggle until they make the picture clear. So you don't wanna just hold it up there. You wanna do it in some increments and give your eye a chance to rest because you don't want your eyes strained when you're down there on the rifle. Perfect, so now I got my, my uh, reticle focused. Now when I'm out shooting, I can take this parallax adjustment and move it back and forth until it brings my target and reticle onto the same focal plane. So I don't pull my head off, I'm not looking. What matters is I'm looking down range and I make these adjustments until my target and reticle are perfect, crisp, and clear. Now, why does this matter? Why does it matter if it's a little fuzzy other than the obvious, I want it to be clear. I have HD ED glass. I want to be able to experience that to the fullest. Well, there's a reason. All right. 
Okay, here is a little way to um, explain why this is such an important adjustment. You'll see that we have a reticle, right? And we have a target. Now with my reticle not on the same focal plane as my target, I can line it up just perfect. But as I move my head around, even just a little bit, it looks like I'm aiming at a different point and that is no good. But as we get our, our uh, reticle and our target on the same focal plane, we'll notice we do not experience that same phenomenon. So this is the reason that it is so important to take care of that and make sure that you are as parallax free as possible. All right, guys, that's it for our parallax tip. If you have any other questions about parallax, feel free to comment below. If you have a tech tip, uh, that you would like us to go over, please put it in those comments below also, and we will go over that for you. So we're excited uh, to hear what you guys have to say and to talk to you next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye. All right, so you guys know, he's not only a great dude, he actually helps design a lot of scopes, and he's a very, very accomplished, extreme, long-range shooter. Jeremiah, I really appreciate the help on this one. Now, there's one other thing that needs to be said. It's ugly, but it's true. On the really inexpensive scopes. If you buy something like a $200 scope that is a 6 to 24, an 8 to 32, that magnifies, say, past maybe 12, 14 power, there's a good chance on the budget scope that when it's focused to its sharpest, it's not going to be parallax free. But here's what you can do. Once you get your reticle focus set, focus on the target and get it as sharp as you can get it. Once you do, have your gun in some type of a shooting vise, setting up on airbags or something like that so that you won't be touching it. Now, at the distance that you're trying to do this, put your head behind the scope and move it without touching the scope. If you see a reticle shift, then it's not parallax free. Now, it may be perfectly focused, but it's not parallax free. There is one little thing you can do. On the eyepiece, generally, you'll have a little wiggle room in there. Try playing with the eyepiece just a little, and a lot of times you can get the reticle, the target, the distance all done down, and parallax free. If you work, take your time and play with this. Some scopes won't do it. There's nothing that you can do about it if they won't. Me personally, especially for hunting, if I have to choose between parallax free or focus, I'll take the focus. Because the parallax is what's gonna eat you up inside of say 200 yards. If you'll look at any focus ring, whether it's on the front or the back, the numbers start stacking up really fast once you pass 200 yards. So the parallax area is not gonna be huge. It's gonna be there. Now I know there's gonna be some guys that are gonna ask me below in the comments, so I'll go ahead and answer this now. On my hunting rifles, do I use scopes that have side focus or parallax on them? If it's a deer hunting, hog hunting type rifle, then I don't. Now, if it's something like a prairie dog rifle or something else, I'm gonna be doing long range precision shooting that I need that extra little bit of accuracy, I will then. But if I'm in the timber, I'm just gonna throw up a rifle real quick, try to put that animal's ass down. It's just one more thing that's gonna mess my dumb ass up. So I don't use it on big game type rifles. Guys, I hope this answers some of your questions. I've got a lot of other videos that if you have questions, so many guys are reluctant to ask, especially you go to the gun range. Everybody at the gun range is an expert. A lot of the gun shops, they make you feel stupid if you go in there and ask them something. If you have an idea for a video that you think would help you and some other guys, leave the comments below. But look through my other videos. I've got a lot of them that cover stuff like first focal plane versus second focal plane, what all the numbers mean on the scope, and a lot of scope buying guides that I've put together to try to help guys out. Thanks guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and thanks for sharing my channel with your buddies. And a big shout out to Jeremiah, you big, tall, sexy devil. I appreciate the help on this one. See you guys.